Virtual reality technology has been established for many years and uh, it's only recently that the public has really started to hear more about it. As people are starting to recognize that you can actually place yourself in a computer generated world and interact it with it in a physical sense, I think this technology is just going to blossom in the future. We are in the 3D lab at uh, the University of Michigan. It's called the Maiden. As you can see, we have the entire room, which is about a 10 foot by 10 foot room, is just big screens. The University of Michigan Maiden uh, is, a, is an amazing facility in the sense that you can be immersed physically in a virtual space. There are other ways of doing, it, doing this because this is an expensive facility, but in my view, this is the best way to be immersed in virtual reality. The computer has to track where you're going, and this is done using this head-mounted device and this handheld device here. Between these two devices and between the room I'm in, I, we create this immersive quality. The little sensors, these are infrared sensors that the, from which the computer is able to place where I am. So as I move it, you can see the image in the back there is changing because the computer thinks I'm moving around and it's moving the image to give me the feeling as if I am kind of walking inside this computer generated space. Now, many universities uh, in the world have a structure like this. It's called the steel, steel sculpture and it shows various steel types of connections. We use this in the steel design course and it teaches our students how to visualize complex 3D spatial situations. Once a university builds a structure like this, it always looks like this. However, we can reconfigure this any way we want. I could have infinite um, configurations of this. I can actually go underneath here and kind of look. I can see that there's a column and it's connected to the underside of the beam. I can see details that would be very hard to see because if this is 10 feet in various universities, you, get, you need a ladder to get up there. However, here, I don't need a ladder. I can go up to it. Even in the future, we can do other things too. Um, I can go into that building, I can make myself a giant, and I can push down on it and kind of see how at a, at a global level the entire structure collapses. Um, that's not something that anybody could do, but I can do it virtually and I can see, look at all the details at how that's happening. And if I want, I could zoom in and become like a little ant and see how the structure collapses around me. On the research side, again, the ability to deal with this vast data and look at it in a highly summarized way and yet get from it a lot of detail is something I think that matters on the research front. But on the educational front, the ability just to see this uh, complexity explained in a way uh, that is understandable, I think, is a great benefit. On the educational side, we're trying to deploy it in our steel design class. So it is, it is being used in the CE 413 steel design course. Our students come into the lab and they uh, explore the various ways by which structures can buckle. I think the potential for us here is more on the educational side, is how we get our students excited about a difficult topic and for them to understand very complex com concepts quickly and in a way that just makes them really want to become structural engineers. That's part of our goal, actually. This system called SmartDig uh, currently consists of uh, a very few things that include a set of cameras that are off the shelf uh, that we have uh, combined or linked together at specific angles so they are able to look in multiple directions. Uh,